Hey, I heard your daughter is in critical condition. That must be tough. What do you mean, tough? You sound kind of happy about it. Well, your daughter has been sick for a long time, right? If she's in critical condition now, then maybe it's fate or just something that can't be helped. There's no need to be sad about it. If anything, it might be a blessing that she'll be free from suffering. Are you serious right now? What do you think my daughter is to me? Don't joke around. Oh, did I make you angry? I'm just stating the facts. Besides, it's actually convenient for me if your daughter is in critical condition. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm planning a trip to Hawaii next week. I can't take my son because he's too noisy, so I need someone to watch him. Since your daughter is in critical condition, I thought you, Laura, could take care of my son. What? Are you serious? Do you even know what I'm going through right now? I understand you're going through a hard time, but I don't want to ruin my trip, you see. So it makes the most sense for you to watch my son. How am I supposed to be the one with free time here? I'm obviously dealing with a lot right now. Do you even have a heart? Oh, come on. Talking about having a heart? You should understand your situation a bit better. If your daughter is going to heaven soon, she probably wants you to spend your time living your life. So you should watch my son. That doesn't make any sense. Don't decide for me if my daughter is going to heaven or not. I know you want to believe she'll be okay, but you should face reality too. Your daughter's life is hanging by a thread. It's better to focus on what's next. Enough already. And what's this about wanting to go to Hawaii? If you want to go on a trip, just go with your family. No, because that would just feel like everyday life. I want a little escape from my daily routine. I can't believe you. I'm not watching your son, okay? You can't just push him onto someone else because you don't want to deal with him. That's not right. Yeah, yeah, I don't care about your feelings. Just think about what souvenir you want from Hawaii. No way. You shouldn't even be going to Hawaii. It's not right to leave your son all alone. What else am I supposed to do? I can't bring him on the trip. Or are you suggesting I just leave him somewhere? What kind of parent does that make you? That's not what I'm saying, but this is just so irresponsible. Okay, okay, I'm tired of hearing about your daughter. Maybe you should start planning her funeral or something. She'll probably be gone by next week anyway. I can't believe you. Why do I have to listen to this from a complete stranger like you? I won't forgive you. Later. Thanks for taking care of my son, even though you're going through a tough time. I'm bringing back souvenirs from Hawaii. I'll be there in 30 minutes to pick him up. No one's watching your son. What? Too bad. I hope you enjoyed your trip. I hope you have a taste of hell after all that fun you had in Hawaii. But wait a minute. Why didn't you take care of my son? I left him right in front of your house. Yeah, about that. I was really confused when he said something funny. He said, my dad's coming home this evening, so I can wait here until then. What? So I went over to your place in the evening, and sure enough, your husband was there. He said you were on a trip with your friend. What's going on? I told you I was going to Hawaii, but I never said it was with my husband. Oh, is that right? Sorry about that. But the truth is, there was no need to watch your son, was there? Why did you say I was supposed to watch him? Because my husband was tired from work, and having our son around wouldn't let him rest. So I wanted you to take him. <laughs> That's a lie. If your husband was tired from work, having your son around would just be part of everyday life for him. You probably told your husband you were going on a trip with your friends and taking your son along, but you never planned on bringing him, so you tried to dump him on me. Oh, plain detective, are we? I'm not in the mood for games. And you promised to watch him. You broke that promise. I never promised anything. Maybe you thought I did, but I never agreed to it. You did promise. Now my plans are all messed up. Oh, plans, huh? What plans exactly? Care to share? Ugh, forget it. There's no plan. You're making me more curious now, but I think I already know who you were on the trip with. What are you talking about? I was just on a trip with friends. If that were true, you wouldn't be acting so suspicious. Why are you so nervous? I'm not nervous. Stop making misleading statements. Oh, I'm sorry, but I think it's time to reveal everything. You were actually on that trip with your lover, weren't you? A lover? What are you talking about? You're just making things up. Don't try to hide it. We know everything. Actually, when you were at the airport for your Hawaii trip, Susan was there too. She saw you arm in arm with a man. She even took a picture. A picture? <gasps> that can't be. Oh, but it is. Would you like to see it? I think most of the other moms already have it. No, I don't need that. Why was Susan even at the airport? Apparently, she was seeing her husband off for an overseas business trip. She was just as surprised to see you there. Wait, wait a second. You're not planning to tell my husband, are you? 
Well, even if I don't, it's only a matter of time before he finds out. He already thinks it's suspicious that you were on a friend's trip. <sighs> this is ridiculous. I was just on a trip with friends. Then why don't you look your husband in the eyes and tell him that? Though I think he already suspects something, especially after your son came home. And now that you mention it, he did keep asking about our son. Asking if he was okay or causing trouble. Was that because... Wow, your husband is totally suspicious of you. What did you even tell him? I said things like, he's doing just fine and no trouble at all. Wow, that's a straight up lie. Your husband is definitely going to be suspicious of you now. No way, this is your fault. If you just watched my son, he wouldn't have found out. I've told you repeatedly there's no reason I should be watching your son. What are you even saying? Do you not have any kids of your own? That means you have plenty of free time, doesn't it? You should relax and use this chance to spend time with a child again. It's good for you. What are you talking about? My daughter is still alive. She miraculously recovered from her critical condition, and her old illness has been cured. She's completely healthy now. What? That sounds like a lie. I thought you'd be having a funeral by now. If we were planning a funeral, I wouldn't be replying like this. My daughter is fine. The doctor said it was nearly a miracle. We're really grateful she made it. Well, that's great, right? So why don't you take this good mood and help me out too? My husband is going to be so mad if he finds out. Oh, it sounds like that's going to be a problem for you. But why should I help you? It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you. I only wanted you to watch my son because I thought your daughter had passed and you'd have the time. But you didn't lose her. This is basically fraud. Fraud? Stop saying nonsense. You're the one who tried to dump your son on me to go on a trip with your lover. That makes you the bad guy here. Shut up. I didn't do anything wrong. I was just on a trip with someone I love. Someone you love, huh? You just admitted it. Whatever you plan to do, you should talk it over with your husband. I don't plan on talking it over. I'll continue seeing him in secret. Do you really think that's possible? Your husband is probably waiting for you to come back. Do you really think I won't tell him what you've been doing? Are you seriously going to tell him? Of course. You tried to dump your son on me without my consent. And the other moms don't want to associate with someone who's been cheating. We're all discussing how to remove you from the group. Don't you dare. I didn't do anything wrong. Going on a trip with someone you love isn't a crime. It's not about the trip itself. It's about the fact that you're married. You made a vow to your husband. If you fall in love with someone else, you need to take responsibility for that. Don't say that. If my husband finds out about the affair and wants a divorce, what will happen to my son? Well, one of you will have to take him, but you've never worked a day in your life, right? So I guess your husband will probably get custody. No way. I've relied on my son to boost my self-esteem. Losing him is not an option. I don't care. And calling your son a tool to boost your self-esteem? What kind of parent does that make you? He's always been there for me and made me feel good. He's irreplaceable. If that's how you see things, then maybe it's best for you to get a divorce. It would be better for your son and your husband. Why am I being told this by someone who's not even involved? You're the one who tricked me about your daughter's condition. No one ever said she was gone. You just misunderstood the situation. Oh, you manipulative. Who do you think you are to say all this? Please don't tell my husband. I have to go home soon. Sorry, but that's not happening. None of the other moms want to deal with you anymore either. Keeping quiet about your affair would feel like we're condoning it. Just get ready to take responsibility. Take responsibility? What am I supposed to do? Well, you're probably getting a divorce, right? And that means you'll have to pay alimony, both you and your lover. Alimony? Why should I have to pay that? Don't think you can cheat and not face consequences. I'm sure your husband will ask for a few hundred thousand at least, so you better be prepared. You can't just say you don't have the money. You caused this mess after all. Anyway, I'm heading to your house now. I need to tell your husband everything. No, please, don't do that. I haven't done anything wrong. Sarah begged me to stop, but I went to her husband and told him the truth. He got furious and divorced her after demanding alimony from both her and her lover. Sarah somehow managed to pay the alimony, but her lover dumped her after the scandal. Now she lives alone, feeling lonely every day. As for me, I'm enjoying life, taking trips with my daughter who thankfully recovered. Hey, Kelly, slow down. It takes a few seconds just to grab my phone. I can't reply that fast. You're really impatient, you know. I told you to reply as soon as I text you. Even if you say that, what do you want? What are you making for dinner tonight? You texted me just for that? It's not just that. What are you making? I was thinking of making a sandwich. Ugh, really? 
Make something more elaborate. What I make for dinner isn't your business, Kelly. Even if we're mom friends, you shouldn't be meddling in my dinners. If you don't make something delicious, it's a problem for me. Why is that? Because my family is on a budget right now. Why does your budget affect my dinner? Because I'm coming over to get whatever you make. To get it? Give me a break. How about a barbecue then? Barbecue? That sounds nice. Right? There's a new restaurant in the station mall. Why are you changing the subject suddenly? I'm not changing the subject. This is just getting to the point. Oh, okay. And what's the point? That place is a barbecue restaurant, right? Oh, it's a high end barbecue place. I heard it's really good. Really? They say the meat melts in your mouth. Yeah, I saw it on TV. See? But since it's high end, it's probably pretty expensive. Not like it's unaffordable, though. I guess that's true. Thanks. I was actually thinking of taking my parents somewhere for their anniversary. Perfect! What better way to celebrate them with a fancy barbecue? Yeah, I guess I'll check with my parents. Why do you need to check with them? I mean, I have to see what they want. My mom mentioned she's on that diet recently, so she might not want something like barbecue. Who wouldn't want barbecue? Especially high end barbecue that melts in your mouth. Why are you getting so worked up about this? Because you're being annoying with all your fussing. Well, I just think it's better to consider my parents' feelings. Who would complain about being taken to a fancy restaurant? Also, my dad's back hurts, so he might not want to sit for too long. Are your parents always this difficult? Not at all. I just want them to enjoy themselves. Are you saying you don't want to go? No, I do want to go. It's not every day you get to eat at a high-end place like that. Then you should book it. You're really pushing this. That place is popular. If you don't book it soon, you won't get a table. Oh, really? Ugh, you're so slow. Fine, I'll book it for you. No, it's fine. I can book it myself. No, you can't. Who knows when you'll get around to it? It doesn't matter when I book it. Why does it matter to you? Because it does. I'm coming too. What? This is for my parents' anniversary. It's not just about your parents' anniversary. Anyway, I'll book it. When's good for you? When's the anniversary? It's at the end of the month. Got it. I'll make the reservation right away. But we might not go. You're going! Five minutes later. I booked it for the last day of the month at 2 p.m. It was fully booked, so getting the reservation was tough. But now we're all set. That's inconvenient for me. It's already decided. Be there at 2 p.m. sharp. Don't forget your wallet. On the day of the reservation. Wow, I'm so full. That filet mignon was amazing. You handled the payment. We're heading home in the car. The bill was about $300, I think. I'm having a barbecue at home. What? You didn't go to the barbecue place? No, I'm just having a barbecue in the yard. It's your parents' anniversary today. Technically, it was yesterday. That doesn't matter. I talked to my parents and they said they wouldn't enjoy eating at such an expensive place. They said it would taste like money. They wanted something fun that everyone could enjoy, so we decided on a barbecue. What kind of poor taste do your parents have? Well, they've been frugal for a long time. Even if I wanted to eat there, I don't want food that tastes like money. I told you 2 p.m. today. I did say we might not go, you just didn't listen. I made a reservation and you don't even show up? That's unbelievable. You made the reservation, not me. It's your responsibility. I told you my family is on a budget. You did, but that's not my concern. Oh, I'm out of barbecue sauce. Going to get some from the fridge. Make someone else get it. This is an emergency. If you don't come, we can't pay the barbecue bill. Emily, answer me when I call you. Stop pinging me. I said to wait. So what is it? We can't pay for the barbecue without you. Oh, really? But you ate the barbecue, right? Yeah. And you haven't paid for it? No. If you eat without paying, you'll get arrested. That's why I told you to bring your wallet. Why should I pay for the barbecue you ate? That makes no sense. This barbecue is pretty tasty. Who cares about cheap barbecue? I told the restaurant you'd be there at 2 p.m. to pay. You didn't even know if I was going to show up, yet you told them that? I told you to come, didn't I? Did you really think I'd listen to that? How did the restaurant even accept your word that I pay? They asked for your phone number, so I gave them my ID instead. You left your ID there? Wow, I'm shocked. They said it was $300, so they demanded I leave my ID. I thought you'd show up at 2 p.m. I'm not coming. You have to. What am I supposed to do if I don't come? Just go home, get the $300, go back to the restaurant and apologize. Even a child could do it. I don't have that kind of money. We're on a budget. Being on a budget doesn't mean you don't have money. Just go to the restaurant and pay. Why should I? It's not my problem. Stop whining and go pay. Bring my ID back. 
You should go get it yourself. You're the one who did something stupid. If you don't help me, the other moms will all shun you. Actually, all the moms are here right now. Should I ask them? Wait, why are they all here? My parents wanted to have fun with everyone, so I invited them. Everyone usually means family, friends, or neighbors. Yeah, plus the moms. I wanted to enjoy myself too. Why wasn't I invited? Because, Kelly, you always do stuff like this. Everyone knows it. Oh, they're all seeing it now. I'll send you the video. I don't want it. So telling the other moms is useless. It's already decided. They don't like you. I don't care if they don't like me. Just pay the bill. I can't have unpaid bills hanging over me. If you don't like it, just go pay. Oh, now we're out of beer. I'm going to get some, so I'll be offline for a bit. Don't go offline. This is a serious issue for me. Emily, wait. Isn't this discussion over? Get over it, please. I just want to enjoy myself with everyone else. If you go pay, that solves everything. But I've had a beer, so I can't drive. Maybe tomorrow. It's $300. Remember that. They're calling me back, so talk later. Two days later. Emily! Hey, Emily! Answer me! Oh, wow. Kelly again? You didn't pay, did you? Of course not. Damn it! I told you to go pay, didn't I? But it's not my meal. And taking your whole family to dinner without paying is beyond rude. It's outrageous. How did you know it was my whole family? The restaurant called me. When I asked, they said it was you and your husband, your two kids, and your grandparents. They said everyone was enjoying the food. I'm glad you had a good time. More importantly, why did they call you? That's simple. When they talked about money, I gave them your number. I also explained everything that happened. They said it was strange to bill me. Why'd you give them my number? That's personal info. You gave them my number first, didn't you? That's different. I needed you to pay. Then just pay up. Stop complaining. It's not that easy. Why not? I don't have the money. You're on a budget, right? That means you have savings. No, I don't. But you have that new designer bag, don't you? What happened? I bought it without telling my husband. So now I'm trying to save to make up for it. But bags don't cost that much. This one was $300. A $300 bag? Yes, and now I don't have the money. That's your own fault. Why not ask your husband? Can't you help me out just a little? Three days later. Emily, answer me. Emily! You're still so impatient. What is it now? The police are involved now. Uh, congratulations. This isn't a joke. I might get arrested for skipping out on a bill. <sighs> That's called fraud. I don't care what it's called. If I don't pay, I'm going to jail. I've tried explaining to the officer, but he just gives me a stern look. Well, the restaurant did get stiffed for $300. They probably would call the police. My husband's going to find out. You still haven't told him? You knew this was coming. I couldn't tell him. He'd be so mad. If all you get is a scolding, consider yourself lucky. It won't just be that. Even so, you should apologize when you've done wrong. Your husband will understand if you explain. I don't think so. Not this time. Not this time? So there are previous times? Don't make me sound like a criminal. It's only a matter of time, really. Come explain to the police. They're going to arrest me. Just ask your husband. How can you be so heartless? It's not about that. We're not even that close. And I think our friendship is nearing its end. Why? Because it's already escalated to this point. Ending this friendship is just a matter of time now. Don't make weird predictions. If you just bring the $300 and explain everything, this will all go away. Not happening. No way. No how. Why not? Because I'm right in the middle of a family vacation. Huh? You didn't tell me that. Why would I? You just tag along. No way would I tell you. Where are you now? If you have money for a vacation, you should give me $300. There you go again with the nonsense. Why should I? Where are you? Tell me. Fine. We're at the airport. The airport? Yeah. My husband got some time off, so we're going overseas. What? I can still catch you. You can try, but we're boarding soon, so good luck with that. Why are you leaving now? To get away from you. Oh, and I told your husband everything. He should be back soon. What? When did you tell him? Just now, I was getting annoyed with you. I recorded our conversation and sent it to him. How do you have my husband's number? Remember when you pushed your husband into the PTA board? He was on it a few years ago when I was on it, so we exchanged numbers. I never thought it would come in handy like this, but I'm glad I did. No way, this is the worst. Well, good luck. Maybe your husband can bail you out. No way, I'm down for. Hang in there. So Kelly got a scolding from her husband right in front of the police. Not only that, but her husband was furious that she'd been mooching off others and making expensive purchases behind his back. Apparently, he'd had enough of her antics and filed for divorce. 
As for the barbecue bill, Kelly had to take full responsibility. She got arrested for skipping out on the bill and committing fraud. Now, with Kelly out of the picture, we moms are enjoying peaceful, happy days together. Hey, Kim, what on earth have you done? You seem pretty worked up. Did something happen? Don't play dumb. You took the savings fund that Mrs. Smith was managing. What were you thinking? Oh, come on. Does it really matter who manages it? Besides, Mrs. Smith is a bit forgetful. I was worried she might lose it. Mrs. Smith isn't that forgetful. Honestly, I'm more worried about you managing the money. What's that supposed to mean? You always take other people's money and never pay it back. You always act like it's no big deal. Someone like you managing 10 people's savings is just crazy. Why is it crazy? You need to stop overreacting. Because the savings total is $10,000. And that's $10,000, Kim. Who knows what you'd do with that kind of money, given how obsessed you are with it. Wow, so rude. Do you really think I use the $10,000 for myself? I wouldn't do something like that. Everyone thinks you're obsessed with money. I heard you've been using other people's money for gambling, poker, horse racing, and whatnot. Oh, come on. Those are just silly rumors. I've never done such a thing. There are many reports from other moms saying you gamble away their money. Are you planning to use the $10,000 savings for gambling too? Uh, you're too suspicious. Everyone misunderstands. What's so bad about gambling anyway? What are you talking about? Gambling has its tricks. If you know what you're doing, you can win. I'm talented at gambling and can't win big. Is that true? Even if it were, it's still wrong to gamble with other people's money. You don't understand. If I can win big, I can pay you all back even more than what you lent me. Doesn't that make lending me money a good deal? What nonsense. We never agreed to let you gamble with our money. And I don't believe you win consistently. Did you want me to return more money to you if I win? No, I don't want you to use my money for that at all. Stop whining, just let me manage the $10,000. I promise I'll give it back with interest. Give it back? So you're planning to use it for gambling? That's not happening. Our money is not yours to play with. Stop it, I'm a talented gambler. I can definitely win. I'm doing this for all of you, so you should be grateful. Enough is enough. If you gamble with our money, I'll take action. A few days later. So I lost all the savings on a horse race. I was planning to increase it, but since I lost, let's change the trip to nearby inn instead of a fancy hotel. I'm filing a police report as we speak. Wait, what? This has to be a joke. This is no joke. I heard from Mrs. Smith that you took a thick envelope to the racetrack. How could you use your money for gambling? But I'm a skilled gambler. I thought with $10,000, I'd definitely win. I just got too excited and made a mistake. I don't care about your excuses. You spent everyone's money and now you have to take responsibility. Wait, wait. I didn't think it would turn out like this. With $10,000, anyone would think they could increase it. A normal person would know not to gamble with money this isn't theirs. You're unbelievable. Wait, please. I don't file a police report. I didn't do anything wrong. I just held on to everyone's money. You didn't just hold on to it. You used it without permission. And what's this nonsense about changing the trip to nearby inn? Even that's not cheap, you know. I know, but what's done is done. There's no money left, so we might as well just go to somewhere near. This is outrageous. We'll be going on the trip without you after you repay the money. Wait, you're not going to take me on the trip? That's too cruel. Why would we take someone like you? You'd probably spend money recklessly on the trip too. Once you run out of your own money, you target ours next. That's not true. You're misunderstanding me. Misunderstanding? What misunderstanding? I wouldn't use my own money on the trip. I just use all of yours. Unbelievable. That's not happening. Whether you let me or not doesn't matter. I'll do as I please. You know what? I just submitted the police report. The officer said it's likely to be accepted. Better brace yourself. Wait, please. Did you really do that? Why would you do this to me? It's nothing personal, but we're the victims here and we need our money back. But I said there's no money left. What do you want me to do? Pull it out of thin air? You're the fool here, not me. Who said you have to repay it yourself? I'm talking about your husband. My husband? Wait, you can't be serious. Yes, your husband. If you can't pay, we have no choice but to tell him. No, you can't. He doesn't know about any of this. If he finds out, it'll be a disaster. The police report is already filed. Sooner or later, he'll find out. Better he hears it from you than someone else. I said no. He's very strict about money. If he finds out I've been using other people's money recklessly, he might even consider divorce. Divorce? Well, that's not my problem. What do you mean not your problem? It's your fault this is happening. 
always blaming others. This is all your fault. If you took other people's money and gambled with it, it's all you. If your husband is strict about money, you should have known better. Wait, you keep blaming me, but I'm not at fault here. I'm a genius at gambling. I was planning to triple that $10,000, but that horse race ruined everything. What was that horse even thinking? You keep calling yourself a genius gambler. A true genius would have been more careful with $10,000. Shut up. I didn't have time to think carefully. In that situation, anyone would have lost their cool. What situation? Well, there were some circumstances. I've always wondered how you have so much money for gambling. Even if you've taken money from us, it shouldn't be enough for how much you gamble. Are you borrowing money? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm sure of it. You've been borrowing money. That's why you can afford to gamble so much. But it proves you're no genius. Just a loser with debt. How dare you look down on me? I'm not just a gambling debtor. I've won big ones. That makes me a genius gambler. Winning ones doesn't make up for your debt. You're just a sad person who keeps losing and piling up debt. Not that it matters to me. You can keep gambling with debt if you like, but I think the police will be knocking on your door soon. Wait, if I'm caught using $10,000, I could be arrested. And what if they make me pay it back? That's probably going to happen. You've done enough wrong to warrant that. No, I don't want that. If my husband finds out I have debts, he might punish me severely. That's a separate issue. You need to face your punishment for this. You'll be scolded by your husband and the police will deal with you. Not fair. Please withdraw the police report. I don't want a criminal record. Oh, really? Well, there's one way you can avoid that. You have to compensate every single mom you hurt. What? Paying all of them back is impossible. Then you'll have to accept your criminal record. I said no. Please, let's negotiate. Okay, I'll negotiate. But it's going to get back to my husband, isn't it? Absolutely. You need to be prepared for that. Wait, I don't want him to find out. Isn't there a way to negotiate without my husband finding out? No, that's impossible. He'll notice something is off, especially since you've caused so much trouble. And we need to make sure he knows. I said no, he'll be so angry. If it leads to divorce, how will you take responsibility? Can you take responsibility? How can you even say that? Whether you get divorced or not is your problem, not mine. You're the one who's wrong, so you should be responsible. Fix this. Make sure he doesn't get mad. There's no reason I should have to fix your mess. And if you've been hiding debts from your husband, it's no wonder he'd be furious. Any husband would be mad about that. Oh, what I do? How can I make sure he doesn't get mad? The only way is to be upfront and ask for a divorce first. It might shock him into giving you a temporary damage. I can't do that. That would just make things worse. And all you can do is keep apologizing and pray he doesn't divorce you. No, it's your fault. I lost the $10,000. If he had just taken it back sooner, this wouldn't have happened. I'm not to blame, you are. You're making less and less sense. Whatever you say, I'm not going to listen. It's time to face reality. I said no, you put me in this situation. Take responsibility and talk to my husband. Apologize on my behalf. Uh-huh, sure. Talking to you is a waste of my time. I'm done here. Wait, don't leave me. Why am I the one stuck here? Kim kept calling and messaging me, but I ignored it. I focused on negotiating with the moms. Kim was forced to pay restitution to all the moms. Her husband found out and was furious. She got divorced and now lives alone, paying off her debts. We finally managed to save up enough money and went on a trip without Kim. 